So what was the number one question you received when you finished school? Um, a lot of people have asked me, what's next? What you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next? What's the plan? Uh, what are you gonna do with your degree? Or what's basketball gonna do for you? What are you gonna do next? Like every other graduate. <laughs> um, what's next in life? Uh, probably, what are you gonna do next? Uh, like what's gonna happen next? Or like what are you gonna do now? A number one question is easily, you know, what are you gonna do next? Like, what's happening after you finish your degree? A million black boys last year that wanted to play in the NBA. Of that million, only 400,000 will even make it to play high school ball. Of that 400,000, only 4,000 will be able to make it to play college ball. Of that 4,000, only 35 will make it to the NBA. Hi, my name is Akachi Akugo. I'm currently 22 years old and graduated from Cal State University of San Marcos with my degree in communications and played four years of collegiate basketball. Amazing, right? With the credibility I have, you'd think I'd have my whole life planned ahead of me. And since I'm a college graduate, I can just use my degree in the real world, make millions of dollars, and live the American dream. <laughs> well, wrong. As of now, I'm technically unemployed, doing an internship, and working out every single day for something that isn't guaranteed. And worst of all, I'm constantly not knowing how to answer the same question I get asked every single day literally and if you know the title of this documentary that question is so what's next so why am i in this so what's next fiasco is it because i didn't take advantage of the free education given to me or maybe i just didn't have the time to balance out basketball the sport i really love in school something I didn't really enjoy. Um, no, no, I don't think college athletes are given enough time to really take advantage of, of the free education that they're given. Um, and it's frustrating because, because a lot of people say, you know, get, get upset with student athletes and say that they're not focused on school and, and they're not taking advantage of, of the opportunity they're given. I would love for, for a regular student to, to have a student athlete schedule during the season for just just one quarter or one semester and 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 show me how you balance that you know show me how you would you would schedule your classes when you can't schedule classes from from two to six six o'clock on any given day you know show me how you're gonna gonna get all your work done when you when after you know you get out at 7 30 or so you got to test the next day you're dead tired from practice and you still have to study just as hard as everybody else every day and get every, all the same work done you think you spent more time on the court than in the classroom oh way more time on the court uh i mean you gotta you gotta put in i mean you we we in the gym before class and then we go to class and then we're in the weight room in between and then we got practice, you got film. So I say you spend almost about around six hours, six, seven hours a day just doing all basketball stuff. Clay classes are only, you got like two classes a day for like an hour and a half. So your time management, and, and you trying to win a national championship, and what kids are doing academically, that's a tough balance. And kids don't get any uh, relief. I mean, you're traveling, you still got to take, it's not like they give you a pass. You're traveling, still got to worry about your classes. So it is a job. Pretty much. I mean, look at the, look at the numbers, as much time as you're on the football field in the gym, as it relates to the week, what you have in that week. And then for the average student, they're focusing on, you know, most students that are really successful, they're not working no job when they're in college. Yeah. They're not working no 40 hours. Yeah, well, that's the crazy thing about it. We're on the court playing way more than we're in the classroom. Right. I never even noticed that either. You, you guys should pull those stats though. Like you look at a, a, a really high, like look at the hours they're in the gym, or, or it's meetings, or it's, it's crazy. That's some football you have on that. According to businessinsider.com, when they did the statistics back in 2010, they stated that men's basketball spends 39.2 hours a week doing things involved with their sport, which includes practices and games. This means student athletes that partake in basketball spend about 5.6 hours daily involved with hoops. I just think, 
I spent more time in the gym definitely than I did in the classroom, to be honest. Like, whether it was traveling, whether it was, I don't know, practice. I was definitely in there more. With the amount of time you spend at practice and games and traveling, um, you almost don't have time for schoolwork. Maybe the reason I'm stuck in this so what's next fiasco is because I was focused solely on basketball and wasn't instructed to really think about anything else other than practice, scouting reports, and the games. It's safe to say that out of all three schools I went to, I was definitely pressured to perform as an athlete more than as a student. Not only would my fellow student athletes agree with me, but also my coaches would too. In your overall time at your university, do you believe you're expected to perform better as a student or an athlete? Um, as an athlete, I mean, it was expected and then it's it's a cutthroat, it's, it's a business. So once you didn't play well, I mean, it, it coaches would act different towards you. And, uh, as an athlete, for sure. You know, especially for the school I went to San Diego State, it's more of a basketball school, you know, so. For sure, as an athlete, not as a, not as a student. The focus was was definitely put and placed on performing in basketball because if I got straight A's but couldn't make a layup, then I'm basically useless um, from a basketball from a college basketball standpoint. So uh, yeah, performance in basketball was definitely the main. Oh, uh, at my time at UCLA, I was expected to perform perform better as an athlete. I mean, I got a full athletic scholarship to go to UCLA for soccer and that's what I was there to do. Um, you know, that's not to say at, um, academics was put at the wayside because if you didn't perform academically, you wouldn't be able to go to the games or even participate. But, you know, when you get the scholarship for athletics, then you're there to perform athletically. Um, obviously athletes, because there's a lot of money being made. So um, I think people are, I mean, we look at it as student athletes from our level. Um, I think at that level uh, it becomes a lot about business, especially when the guys that are really talented too. Um, I feel like, you know, with my coaching staff, I, you know, I love them to death, definitely. But at the same time, their job is um, is my performance. The way that they feed their families and all that type of stuff is based off of the way that uh, I play and the way that the rest of my team plays. Because uh, for them, wins means dollars. The actions taken today uh, make certain that students are going to be students who happen to be athletes, not the other way around. After knowing that the pressure is all on being an athlete, why are we even still called student athletes? Why don't they just call us athlete students? I mean, that's how we all feel anyways, right? Uh, I definitely felt like I was an athlete first while I was at USC, unfortunately, just because the focus uh, was so heavy on athletics and that was the important piece of I feel like that was the real reason why they kind of they didn't say say it that bluntly but they conveyed the message that that was kind of the real reason why we were there. I literally went to school to UCLA for three months so I was technically probably an athlete student. Um, athlete first for sure. Um, a lot of money is being um, handed down to you to you know make your college life easier. I feel like I was an athlete first to perform because if you don't perform you lose your scholarship. Uh, I definitely think it should be athlete students because uh, just through my experiences it was always athletics that came first you know coaches never really yelled at guys or anything like that if uh, for academics unless they were ineligible to play because obviously if you're ineligible then you can't perform athletically and you know during my time at Grand Canyon you know I was there for a year before I transferred uh, they like over recruited me and they're trying to get me out of there because of my athletics. You know, I had a three, six, three, seven. So it wasn't the academics, it was the athletic side. So through my experiences, and I think a lot of guys um, can agree, uh, it's, it definitely should be athlete student first. You know, I just always felt athletics was first. As your senior players move on to NCAA schools, do you see them being treated as students first or athletes first? Athletes first. 
for sure. It doesn't come to a surprise that athletics come first, because even the coaches know that. As sad as it is to say, former coaches that I've had can even attest that wins are more important than academics. Not only this, but in some cases, just use academics to keep players eligible. While you coached at the bigger schools such as UCLA and USC, did the coaching staff put more emphasis on athletics or into um, academics? Well, unfortunately at the high levels, uh, winning is what keeps coaches jobs. So sometimes uh, the coaches that I worked for uh, did preach academics, but, uh, but basketball was just so important, almost too much to the, to the point because you're playing in front of 12. 15,000 people every night. You're playing on national TV. Uh, a lot of the players at that level want to go to the NBA. And so unfortunately, basketball will kind of really take a leap ahead of academics, even though we all know in the back of our minds, again, that academics should be the most important thing. But I have to admit that it's not always the case because of the pressure to win for coaches. And they win nine games and you know, that's not good enough. I mean, at the end of the day, the coaches, their job is to win games, and if they don't win games, they're going to get fired. When we lose three games, what's going to happen to me? But with mine, if you lose enough, you get fired. And that's just the way it is. As a coach, do you get critiqued more for your team underperforming academically or underperforming on the court? That's a great question. I would say I haven't really had the Personally, in the last 25 years, I haven't had the critiquing of our kids doing poorly off the court just because we've had so much success of kids moving on. Um, but when we don't win basketball games, it's 100%, I, I hear it. And usually if you have guys that aren't going to the next level, you're not going to end up getting those top recruits to come and play for you the following year. While I was in school, I never completed a resume or did an internship due to summer workouts and my time consumption with basketball. This plays a role in the so what's next phenomenon because many student athletes don't get a chance to even explore what they want to do next. While you were in school, did you ever complete a resume or do an, or do an internship? No, I didn't and I, I still haven't, you know, I, I, I feel I've been meaning to do it. This summer, I really, you know, I talked to my brother and he was telling me I should, and, but it's tough. I have a basketball, <laughs> I have a basketball uh, resume. <laughs> Why haven't you completed a resume? Man, that's, I, I, you know, actually, when I get home today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a resume just because of you guys. Oh, okay. Did you ever complete a resume? No, I didn't. Why's that? I didn't think it was necessary for what I was trying to do. Um, I mean, I think there was a couple classes where they, you know, kind of tried to show you, you know, like, this is what you're going to have to do, you know, do a little, like, draft resume. But I never, never did, like, a full, you know, full-on resume. Did you ever complete an internship while you were at Sac State? Nope. I didn't have time for no internships or anything like that outside of working out and staying in shape. No, uh, never did either one. Um, when I was a student athlete at Oregon, no, I never completed a resume or did an internship. I should have one, and it's bad that I don't, but I should. Uh, I took a class where I had to do a resume, so I, it, was a couple, it was like a workshop class, and so I learned how to do it, but I didn't really have a lot of stuff to put on the resume, so it was pretty quick. <laughs> I've never had to make a resume in my life. <laughs> No, I never did any type of internship. Not that I couldn't, I just, I, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't really that interested. You know, as student athletes, especially basketball players, uh, definitely don't have time to do internships or, you know, complete resumes. I completed one resume during the class, but uh, resume, you have to actually have some experience on there. So the resume was crap. It, it wouldn't have worked anywhere. While I was in college, I never completed a resume never was taught how to complete a resume, and I never, I did a resume in high school, but I never did a resume in college. And you were at USC, that's one of the best schools in the world. It was, it is one of the best schools in the world, but um, I, I don't know why I was not 
um, call it resumes and um, why I was never offered, you know, intern, intern positions anywhere, you know. But I feel like, you know, part of it was we had a job to do and that job was to play football. Marathon Industries, give me a breakdown. It's a B2B company that provides uh, cloud storage for Fortune 500 companies. Chet, what did the market research turn up? What? Oh, I googled them, but the results were weird. You didn't use the market research database that we spent thousands of dollars a month on and that you were specifically trained to use. I quit. This job is different than I thought it would be. Stop. Does this situation look familiar? A new type of worker has entered the workforce. Due to the fact that many student athletes haven't completed a resume or have done an internship or don't even have a clue of what they want to do besides their sport, it's kind of mind boggling. But that happens when your life is revolved around your true love and passion, which is the sport you play. But with that said, that is also the reason why athletes can be at a disadvantage when they want to or have to get into the workforce. Um, well, it's a, it's a disadvantage to get into like the workforce because you haven't, like other students have time to get a job and get real work experience. So you don't have that those skills, but you also gain other team building skills and learning how to work uh, as a unit and how to take advantage of your uh, strengths and weaknesses. So it gives you a different type of training, but doesn't give you real work experience. Yeah, um, I actually have a few friends that are struggling right now. Coming out of college when you're playing basketball, um, you know, the seasons work out. You know, you're, you're in the middle of the season during winter and going into spring, uh, you're obviously finishing up March Madness and everything like that. So for them right now, they're about three or four months behind on getting job applications out and everything like that because the obviously the precedence and the time schedule for us in order to make it to classes, in order to make it to practice, and make it to games, traveling, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time extra, especially if you want to get rest in between there. So, you know, definitely they're, they're having to catch up right now. I have a few friends that are obviously struggling, but, you know, they're, they come from good families, so the families are able to take care of them right now. But they're behind. They're behind. It's just part of the process as a basketball player and as a, you know, as a D1 college athlete, you kind of, you know, think about after basketball or after whatever your sport is, you think of right then, right now. You have a season and your mind kind of goes to that and then once that ends, you're kind of left on, you know, overhanging. Would you be at a disadvantage if you weren't playing professionally? Definitely. I mean, I, I wouldn't know what, what else to do. I mean, I would it, would it would just be like restarting my whole life because my whole life I've just been working for this one thing to be a professional athlete. So if that if that if I wasn't able to do that, I wouldn't really know where to start. Uh, I think there's two parts to that. I have some friends that um, that kind of gave it all within basketball and then maybe didn't prepare for afterwards uh, when indeed they would stop playing basketball. <clears throat> and uh, so I have some of those friends and I think they're probably having a tough time really finding what they might be doing. I kind of put myself in that category a little bit. And then uh, with others, I think they use the opportunities and connections from basketball to really set themselves up for a career outside of that particular sport. Um, I think that student athletes, to an extent, have a disadvantage. To an extent, have an advantage. You know, obviously, if you're uh, under full scholarship, you don't have any loans to worry about, as opposed to other students that possibly do. Um, when it comes to finding careers outside of the sport that you play, it's uh, pretty difficult because, again, you know, you've been thinking, athlete, athlete, I'm going to make this. The people close around you have been, you know, focused basically on, you know, you being an athlete and um, not thinking about your career possibly after athletics and um, you know that's the disadvantage that we're at. It's probably over 3,000 seniors that play basketball just in the United States every year. There's only two rounds of drafts. So that means out of 3,000 seniors only 60 guys get drafted. Woo. At the time, I didn't pay attention to the fact that I had no idea what I wanted to do besides wanting to become a professional basketball player. Although it crossed my mind that at some point playing after college may not happen, what really were the odds of me going pro anyways? Well, let's see. 
According to NCAA.com, out of the 18,697 men's basketball student athlete participants, only 1.1% go on to play in the NBA. In this past year's NBA 2016 draft, out of the 60 selections, 26 of them were internationals, the highest amount of internationals taken in draft history. And that number is only going to continue to grow as basketball begins to make an impact worldwide. So for student athletes here in the States, the percentages are only going to get smaller. Seeing these statistics, many people would think it's on the student athletes to better prepare themselves for the real world and not put their eggs in one basket. But that's basically impossible to do because basketball is something most of us have been doing our whole lives. So knowing these statistics and the odds of becoming a professional basketball player, why do we continue to chase these dreams? Man, you know, this has been my dream for since I was a little kid, you know, just to play professional, you know, NBA or overseas, just just playing basketball and making money. This is what I love, this is my passion. I felt like if I worked hard, I could beat the odds. I definitely wanted to be a professional basketball player. I mean, I feel like that's the reason to continue playing in college. Like if you really care about the sport, if you really love it and you're really passionate, then why would that not be your dream? So you put all your eggs in one basket here in college? Mm. For the most part, yeah. Not completely all in there, but majority of them. <laughs> it's my passion. Uh, anybody who really knows me, ever since I've been a little kid, uh, I've always wanted to be a professional uh, basketball player. And you know, as you just get older, it, it becomes a routine. It becomes, it, be it becomes who you are, you know? You go to school, you play basketball. Since you're six years old till you're a 22 year old senior in college. So, and that's why a lot of guys go through the So What's Next epidemic because that's literally all you know. And if that's what you've been doing your whole life, why not, why not pursue it? Why not try to be a professional basketball player? And it's very hard to let go of something that you've done for half your life, <laughs> right? And it's kind of become who you are. Most student athletes plan A is playing at a professional level. So what happens when their plan A doesn't work out or when it does work out and it's cut short? Unfortunately, a lot of times when their overseas career, or MBA career is done, uh, they kind of, they're kind of lost in a way and they got to find themselves. Some of them have to go back and get their degree and then uh, start from ground zero to build a life and a career for themselves. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of college athletes are are in that position and I mean still are man. I know cats are graduated in 2013 that are still looking for overseas jobs. I think uh, a lot of people have, um, how do I say it, uh, they're very biased towards how good they are. People think they're better than they are. Most guys all think they have a chance to make the NBA when it's really the numbers say that it's not realistic for anybody to be in the NBA. I mean if you look at the percentages of guys that are going to the league, it's probably less than one percent. So um, if you have a team of 13 guys and all 13 guys think they're going to the NBA and actually none of them are going to the NBA, there's going to be a lot of people who are leaving that situation in college, coming out of college with the what's next phase because uh, they're going to think that their abilities are going to pay off financially and they're not. They're going to have to go in the real world and get a job. I just see like a lot of indecision. Like um, a lot of them don't really know what they want to do. Uh, for example, my boy Dre, uh, he graduated and uh, he got a job right away, but it's still something that he like, he tells me every day that he's thinking about like uh, starting something else, going to a new career path because he's really not sure exactly what he wants to do. So yeah, I see a lot of indecision not knowing which avenue they want to take because they've always had their passion obviously of uh, playing sports and dreams of going professionally, but that rarely works out. So yeah, a lot of indecision. Well, it's tough. It's a tough transition for a lot of guys, um, especially nowadays because guys come out of college early without any skill set, without any um, education. Uh, but even those that finish with college, um, you know, usually you think you're going to play longer than you do. So for a normal guy, four years in the NBA or maybe, you know, four or five years overseas, you're done when you're mid-20s and um, you really don't know what else you want to do. So. It's a tough transition. Uh, hopefully you did learn something in college and have a passion for something other than basketball. And um, you, can, you can get 
get into whatever you, it is you're going to do next quickly. But for others, it's, it's a definite tough transition. And, um, you know, the programs that the NBA puts together during the summertime, you know, guys definitely need to take advantage of them so they can try to find out what their passion is. The NCAA raised eyebrows this week when it said it is not responsible for the education of student athletes. When you break it down, it seems like it's nearly impossible to be in the NBA. And as much as athletes don't want to admit it, in the back of their heads, athletes know the chances of going pro are slim. But we still don't put any of our eggs in another basket. It's like we're trapped. So, I asked some of my fellow student athletes and coaches, what can the NCAA or even us athletes do to help lessen the so what's next phenomenon? And this is what they had to say. I think the NCAA could offer more programs that are not just, you know, the easy way out where students are, you know, taking a, you know, getting a communication degree or something that they might not use. I would like to see the NCAA um, even teach some of the athletes maybe a trade uh, while they're at school. I mean, it could be something as simple as welding, plumbing, electrical, whatever, but at least some of those student athletes when they get out could have a trade where they could make 20, 30, 40 bucks an hour when they're coming out of school instead of fighting, you know, for maybe a job that they're not totally prepared for. I think um, they should have more seminars, more um, more guest speakers, more, I think they should even have like a curriculum for student athletes, whether it's teaching them the basics to handling your own money, the basics to writing a resume, because when you're uh, highly recruited all your life, you really you don't really have to do all those things that you're forced to do in the real world, whether it's writing a resume, you know, preparing for a job interview, usually kind of get things handed to you or, you know, you just connected well enough to get things, uh, get the shortcuts. Well, I think it's like anything else. Uh, I think you got to get out in the real world. I think you got to you got to do real life experiences, real life jobs. And I don't think enough that uh, sitting behind a book and writing a paper doesn't prepare you for the real world. Uh, if I'm going to fix a tire of a car, I need to go in and do it myself. I need to get the tools out myself and someone shows me how to do it. If I read it from a book, I probably will never be able to fix that tire. I'll still be sitting on the side of the road waiting for AAA to come. I don't necessarily know if it's the NCAA's job to do this. I think uh, more it's uh, made a little bigger than the NCAA and it's a lot of, has to do with a lot of the institutions and just a lot of the cultures that these athletes come from and how they grow up and, and the things that are emphasized in their households and emphasized by their coaches and emphasized you know, by the people in college and by their tutors and their advisors in college. I feel like a lot of that can change how, just how kids think about sports and how they think about business and how they think about you know, having to go to work or things other than sports that they may consider work. I think that could really help change the shift if the universities and the parents and the coaches and the teachers, if we made a bigger emphasis to these athletes, how important it really was. And then the other thing is that, you know, for athletes that come next, understanding that there is a finality to it. We all know that 98.9% .9 of student athletes have to answer the question, so what's next? But is that question invalid to the other 1.1% of student athletes who end up being professionals? No, it's not. In life, all things come to an end. And in sports, the ball drops for everyone at some point, and they have to face that question too. So what's next for uh, Scala this year? I'm not sure yet, I'm still thinking about that. I just, I think it's gonna involve uh, something with helping people because uh, I like to do that. Uh, but I'm not sure yet, I'm still thinking about that. Well, uh... You know, I have a degree in business management, which means I really don't know what I want to do. But, you know, playing um, on so many different teams, I've made a lot of relationships in the NBA. And uh, I could really see myself playing, um, uh, being in a, a front office role or maybe even a coaching role. I've done um, the summer programs, the front office program, the coaching program, as well as the broadcasting program. So. Hopefully I have a lot of options. I just need to figure out exactly what I want to do, but it's, um, it's, it's probably going to be one of those three things. Being a student athlete at the collegiate level is one of the biggest privileges an athlete comes across in his or her lifetime through being able to play the sport you love, having teammates, and having your classmates support you in your craft. With that said, 
Those four years that you get to play the sport you love while getting your education paid for goes by quickly. And as athletes, we get caught up living in the moment. Living in the moment so much that we forget to take a step back and ask ourselves, what if this doesn't work out? Or what if God has a different plan for me? As for me, I just finished school and I am still in that transition of figuring out what life has to offer and figuring out what's next. But for all of you up and coming and current collegiate student athletes, and even you professionals, as your shot clock winds down, ask yourself, so what's next? Is it to Jenkins for the championship? My name is Will Davis, so what's next? This is Gary Melvin, so what's next? This is Xavier Staines, so what's next? This is Theo Johnson, so what's next? My name is Nate Gar, so what's next? My name is Parker Yu, what's next? <laughs> this is Gus Armstead, to the Hoop Basketball Services, what's next? And this is Darius Graham, so what's next? This is Garrett Temple of the Sacramento Kings. So what's next? This is Nate Temple Dammit, coming to Magic. So what's next? Eric Armstead of San Francisco 49ers. So what's next? This is Cody Demps. So what's next? It's Amobi Okugo, currently playing professional soccer with the Portland Timbers. So what's next? This is Scalab this year from the Sacramento Kings. So what's next? My name is Kyle Arister. So what's next? This is Chuk Sirebu. So what's next? This is Josh Richard, so what's next? This is Michael Bryson, so what's next? My name is Coach Shai, so what's next? I'm Dan Alexander, so what's next? This is Chris Smith, so what's next? This is Bryce Presley, so what's next? This is Ike Okoye, what's next? This is Mike McKinney, so what's next? This is Coach Doug Cornelius, what's next? So what's next? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is like the important time. This is Coach Doug Cornelius, so what's next? Perfect. So what's next for Akati Kugo? What is next for Akati Kugo? Um, man, you know, I got, I got blessed with the opportunity. I was lucky. Uh, th this Kings internship came for me at a good, I was lost, obviously. And the internship came at a good time for me. I was still trying to play basketball. I think that door has closed. Um, I'm still trying to get over that door and who knows, um, the Kings could offer me a position and I could take it that route. Uh, I have my own clothing line and I'm on web series right now. So I've always wanted to uh, dip into the entertainment route to see what uh, that could bring for me. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to see what opportunities open themselves. Uh, in my life, uh, things have happened at random. So I could say what's next for me is that, uh, you know, I'm just still gonna try to strive to do things I'm interested in, which is, maybe the entertainment business or who knows, maybe even uh, be able to share this story with the rest of the world and that people can relate to, who knows. <laughs>